What would you like to give voice to? What experience would you like to share? What is it that you wish to talk about? At t e d a t e d everything and everyone is welcome. And this show honors who you truly are and the story you have for all of us. Tonight, we have two wonderful people who will share their story of love, vulnerability, and courage. Yvette Intig is a founder, director, and head administrator of Blessed Trinity Achievers Academy. She is an artist member of the Cornelio Feigau Workshop and the Young Thespians of Cebu. She also produces conversations with Dietrich Tep. Help me welcome my fellow life coach. Yvette Intig with her partner, Jesse Carla Tienza, also was once a broadcast journalist and banker. Currently, he is a part time teacher at the Blessed Trinity Achievers Academies. Help me welcome Yvette and Jesse. Hello. Hi. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Yvette. How are you two doing? <laughs> We're good. It's an honor to be here, Miss Polly. Yeah, we're so excited to be interviewed by you, Miss Polly. So thank you so much for this opportunity. <laughs> yeah. I know initially we had like um, we know, we initially talked about having a preliminary discussion, more or less like a meet and greet, but we only had like 15 minutes. So mm -hmm. I hope though that this will be a good time for us to really talk about what I really wanted to know before. Like um, I saw your interview with KMJS. Um, I know a little about what you shared at KMJS. You also had an interview with Gugma Talk where you talk in detail how you two meet um, or how you two met and how your love, courage, devotion for each other and even that vulnerability space that you really are willing to discuss that to, to that interview. So today I just want to honor your story in a very respectful way that others can also learn from your courage because we need to be courageous, especially now that we're in pandemic. Love yes. is a form of courage, I suppose. So I'm very interested to know, and perhaps for the others who probably have do not know you or probably it's the first time that they will hear their story, perhaps you may want to introduce yourselves first, apart from what I already gave them as an idea of who, they, who you two are. Okay, so me first. Yeah. Okay, so hi guys. Hello from the Philippines, from Cebu City, Philippines. Uh, my name is Yvette Intig. Intig. I am 45 years old, a mother of four, ages 24, 20, 18, and 16. I, um, I used to be married and then um, I I own a school. The school, Blessed Trinity Achievers Academy, is like 20 years old now. So mm. that's just the surface of who I am. And now it's going to be Jesse's turn <laughs> because more of the questions will be coming from you, Miss Polly, and that's going to be the time that they will be knowing more deeply about me. So right. Jesse, it's your turn. <laughs> Go. All right. So uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Jesse Atienza. And uh, I am 29 years old, and um, I'm the only kid in my family. And um, yeah, uh, I've been uh, Yvette's partner for like running four years. Four years now, already. Yeah. And right now, I'm doing part-time teaching uh, in her school. So I teach a minor subject, which is current events to her students. So I enjoy working with her, and yeah, I'm so excited to be here you guys. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Yvette. So I think for, I think let's just probably give everybody, um, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. So probably we can just give everybody a background. I know you probably have told this story a million times and I hope you will allow me to ask this again. How did the two of you meet? First. Okay. It could be from Jesse or Yvette. Perhaps sometimes there are like different versions and variations of stories. <laughs> so, yeah. so Jesse or Yvette, um, Jesse, you may go first if you want to. Okay, I'll go first. Uh, we first met way back in 2017, around January of 2017. I was mm -hmm. still working in the banking industry at that time here in Cebu. 
And I really had, for me at that time, I was so bored with my life in a way because uh, the only things that I, the things that I only do are, you know, I just go to work. And then after work, I just go home and do nothing. And then every weekend I just see my friends and then it's like everything is just like routinary. So there was it's just like, there was no more adventure for me at that time. So I was just surprised that one day I was invited by a schoolmate way back in college to a theater production in mm. which I really didn't have any experience at that time. So I was surprised, okay, sure, why not? Maybe this is the, the adventure that I was looking for. <laughs> so uh, so there, I, I, uh, I went to the rehearsal venue, so that's where. I saw Yvette for the first time, but I was already late at that time. They were already starting with the rehear- I mean, the, with a reading at that time. Right. And um, she was like one of the first few people that I really noticed because um, when I went in, it was she was the one doing her part. She was reading her mm-hmm. part, and mm-hmm. I, I can really hear her voice loud and clear. And she was very articulate with whatever she was reading at that time. And so, uh, I, I thought to myself, she's a really cute Japanese-looking girl. So. Japanese. <laughs> she thought I was a girl. <laughs> I thought she was Japanese because she okay. looks like Japanese. So yeah, uh, and then yeah, and then the rest was history at that time. So, right. Yeah. And Jess, you also mentioned that that was your first show, right? That was your first yeah. time to be in a play. Yes. And I meant and I think um you mentioned too that this play, um, this play was once a movie and they made a play out of it. And it's about the gay relationship and it requires you having to kiss a man. That's the requirement. Yes. And they That's were looking correct. for a person to play that part, but no one can play that part. And then you were brought in and yes, you have to play correct. that part. And yes, you're there and said, correct. okay, so yeah. what was the feeling so, like that this is the first time to be in a play? I don't know what this what the what this world is technically. And you have mm-hmm. a very daring role. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> Well, he was looking for adventure, so that was the venturing he yeah, was looking maybe. for. Uh, so, what I mentioned this maybe I just told myself now, if this was the adventure that I was looking for, then maybe I'll just take that risk. Mm. You know? uh, okay. Because um, in because my philosophy ever since that uh, for you to enjoy life, you need to take risks sometimes. Right. So, so that was your risk. Uh, so that was the risk that I took. <laughs> so. But I asked my friend, like, why is it that you are inviting me this time? I thought, you know, when you do mm-hmm. theater productions, you do casting, you do auditions. That's what I, I really told her that. Mm-hmm. But then she said, you know what? The truth is, there's like a catch, you know. Uh, we, we had already like a cast for the character. I mean, we already had like someone for the character, but eventually the person backed out when he found out that there was like a kissing scene. So I was surprised. Oh, so you mean that like kissing scene was okay for me? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> so you were With looking for adventure. Yeah, yeah, you so, were looking for adventure, it seems. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, the, that's the thing that really convinced me more. Okay, so yeah, let's do this. So okay. we'll never know what would happen next. And then boom, I met Yvette. So that's I think beautiful. that so, risk was really worth taking, I think. <laughs> right, right. Looking at it now after four years, right? You would, oh, yeah. <laughs> you would definitely say that. How about Yvette? What's your what's your version of when Jesse really stepped into your life, really introduced himself to you, probably even showing intentions of really liking you more than a colleague in the in the space of theater, but really wanted to build a relationship with you? When he was very expressive already, this Polly, I really did not take it seriously because during that time, um, my life was actually in a mess. <laughs> oh. I was in the process of annulment mm-hmm. and the school was not really in good shape. Financially, it was like really not in good shape. And I also had to uh, deal with my kids because um, the annulment was also kind of messy if my life was messy during that time so was the annulment and the kids were like mm. kind of um emotionally also they, they were affected 
So I, I, I made it self clear to, 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 to them that they're going to be my priority. And mm -hmm. plus, the, in, in the Philippine setting, there's so many gossips going around, you being the school owner, and you in the process of annulment, and all those talks. So it was kind of um, not really good to have a, to, 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 to create another relationship at that point. So when he came in, mm -hmm. I was very hesitant. But then he was very, he was very, no, how should I say, not pushy, but he was kind of very persistent and consistent very with himself. So he was very expressive. And knowing that he was a millennial and millennials, you know, millennials have this image of, ah, okay, he might just be <laughs> jumping from one relationship to the next. And he was known to be as a mm boy. So, <laughs> so I, um, I thought, for a moment, and I said, if he wants to play, then I, I you know, I'd, I'd like to play along. But I yeah. never expected that the play would turn out to be serious because, um, in the long run, he was already becoming very engaged in my life in every detail about me. He was very interested to the point that he really already wanted to, um, you know. Uh, uh, learn more about my kids, my life in school. So I said, Hala, he might be mm. very serious huh? and he could be a very mm. good partner already for mm -hmm. the future, knowing that at present, he was mm. already showing those signs. Right. So I gave in. I gave in to his consistency and to his being very persistent. Right. So when was that time when you finally, you know, educated Jesse where you're coming from as a woman? Because you mentioned that you were still in the process of annulment at that time. Number two, the school financially was not at its best. And at the same time, you also have your kids, you have four kids. When did you finally have that conversation with him that, look, man, if you'll get in, this is what you need to, this is what you need to face. These are the things that you have to face head on. Mm. So um it was like around um, maybe within the two weeks of him being very expressive that I really uh, looked at him straight in the eye and told him that um, this is what you're going to get yourself into. But I won't be expecting that you're going to be here in the long run. Oh, okay. But the, <laughs> and yeah, because no expectation. I, uh, no, because um, I, I, I told him that I told him that this is what you're going to get yourself into. But then if you want to have a taste of it, I would allow you because you would never know what you're what you are getting into if you're not going to have a taste of it. So mm -hmm. I allowed him and I even expected him to drop everything after two weeks of tasting it, you know, tasting my life. This but is, then two weeks it became a month, after, two months and show. three months. And then mm -hmm. I realized that he was really there for the long run. Wow. Especially when he tried to already uh, dig deeper, you know, have those relationships with the people who were very, very important to me. Uh, right. Number one, there were my kids. So he started to cultivate relations with each one of them, knowing that these four kids of mine have different character and personalities. So that was actually kind of a burden from his end, but he still persevered you know and then love requires a lot of sacrifices <laughs> if you really love someone you don't have to I did not even expect him to prove it but one day at a time he was already showing that that kind of love uh, that wasn't already just promised uh, merely by words or by saying, I'm going to show that to you he he did it you know because love for me is a verb and he showed it each and every day by not only saying to me that he loves me, but in fact, by, by the little things, you know, mm -hmm. the little things uh, with my kids, with helping me out in the school, uh, with, with, with even making me coffee every day, those little things. So those yeah, are the things that, that that's, that's when love becomes a verb. Yes. It's really the action. It's really the things that you do consistently because exactly just really just wants to do that then Jess on your end when you finally got a taste of what it is <laughs> to be with Yvette 
how did you feel about, oops, I'm getting into this and this is where I will see myself in the coming months and understanding the dynamics that you're in school with Yvette, the kids of Yvette. Those are the things that you really have to marry alongside being with Yvette. So how was it like? At first, I was uh, really like thinking about it for like a while. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, um, am I really ready for this kind of uh, situation? Am I really ready to uh, brace the whatever situation that she was in at that time? But then, whenever I, whenever I was with her at that time, I realized that I really, you know what? I really don't have to think about whatever she situation she was. I was what I was thinking at that time is. I'm happy with her. I feel so alive when I'm with her. And I feel like I also give her that kind of hope that she is, she might had, uh, well, she had a, uh, what do you call this? Like uh, the relationship that she had before did not work, but she can still have that chance. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. maybe I have this opportunity to share with her that chance mm. that there's hope. That the There's end hope. of a previous marriage is not the okay. end. Right. Mm. So I want to I want to hold on to the word hope because in one of the interviews, Yvette, you mentioned too that I may damage good. You mentioned you use that word damaged good. What do you mean by that? I'm a damaged good. You see, Miss Polly, if in a relationship and if trust is already broken, there's a part of you that becomes so jaded already. Mm. And then um you become who you were before, like the innocence, mm. the, the idealistic love, the idealistic marriage, that family that a woman would really love to have, and then everything crumbles, then a big part of you dies with it. And that's where I would say <laughs> you become a damaged good. And that being damaged with you becomes part of history when you open yourself to love again. So mm. then I realized that in the process of actually letting go of that history of being a damaged good and having someone who loves you again and makes you realize that, hey, even though you're a damaged good, you can still be restored and you can still be loved again. And it mm. makes you hopeful and it mm. makes you laugh again. It makes you alive again. So... Uh, I think that's what I meant about being a damaged good, a damaged good who became restored again in the face of love. Mm -hmm. Is it something that is that something that you look not looked forward, but you know that I per, I may perhaps be damaged now, but I can still be restored. Or at that moment when it happened, it was just like a dark hole of there's really nothing happening here. I will just take care of my school. I will just mm. take care of my kids point blank and that's it. So at mm. that time when it happened, what were your visions or what what were the talks that you had in your head? You were right. It was more of taking care of my kids, of the school, of myself and the people in the school and not even um, thinking of entertaining any relationship because it was not mm. only Jesse who showed interest. Uh, oh, yeah! I, I also watched that part in the interview. Ang dami nila, I think. <laughs> it was not only him, and people would always ask me, "Why him? Why is it that?" I really don't know. Be maybe because I really feel safe with him, and then whenever I'm with him, every day there is like no expectations, and there's nothing to prove. Because um, mm. I'm I I'm sorry, Miss Polly, and I might. Uh, I, I might be uh, misinterpreted no, with, with, with what I'm going to say after this, mm -hmm. but I started to this. I, I I wanted to live a life without any expectations, without proving mm -hmm. to anyone who I am, what I'm going to do. I just want to live my life happily, without any strings attached, without any condition, because mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've I've I had a life like that before. And then I gave in to all the rules and to all the laws and to all the policies, and it still crumbled down. 
Mm. So after that chapter of my life, so um, even though I was in the dark, I, I made it to a point that after this, I will not let any man hold me down. <laughs> Something like that. Yes. Wow. So this is like the phoenix rising again. Yes. Like no man can hold me down. Hold me down. No man will <clears throat> tell me, no, you're not going to do this. No, you're not going to do that. And so, so when Jesse came, empowering. I felt that, uh, yes. Yes, that Ms. Polly. Very, that sounds very empowering. Like no man can hold me down. And I think one year or another, Jesse probably felt that in motion and in action of mm -hmm. you cannot hold me down. Jesse, mm -hmm. do you have any stories of feeling that no one can hold me down kind of feeling actually i don't really feel that but because um i just support her in whatever she wants to do mm. i don't even give her like any rules or you know just like simple of like wearing of shorts uh, or anything like i just allow her to wear anything that she wants as long as it fits her as long as she feels comfortable wearing it it's fine with me. I, I I don't really impose anything with her. I just allow her to be herself. So because that's you let her be. At. So probably, so is it because you're a millennial that you have a room to move around and you're not as rigid as I'm, I'm your partner and you should do this? I think that's also a factor. Oh, um, good. Everybody I will be happy to have a millennial in their life. Uh -huh. I think it's also a factor because she's a very... She's a very free-spirited woman. Mm -hmm. That's what I see in her. And, and the two and of if you met. If you're a type of guy that you would control her, she might mm. go berserk. So. <laughs> I mean, a woman scared. that cannot be controlled. Ganon. <laughs> so Good. so I, I don't really feel that uh, kind of thing that, that I pull her down or what. I'm just well, or maybe because the, the things that I really want, like the mountains, tattoos, theater, mm -hmm. performance, and stage, are also things that you love. Yeah, mm -hmm. also, also another. Yeah. That's why we are kind of aligned with that. And mm -hmm. then you're not holding me down because, again, the things that I love are the things she loves. So we're like we're enjoying mm -hmm. it together. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. So, so you enjoy the same thing. Theater, for example, I think the two of you enjoy that. Teaching, for example, is another thing that the two of you enjoy, I think. But I have one interesting question here. I think everybody's very interested to know this, especially in the Philippine arena of mm. having a family. So I have a friend. You know her, Yvette. She's Elaine. Elaine wanted to know, how did your kids react? Especially that Jesse's a few years older than your eldest. And was <laughs> it an issue? Hi, first and foremost, hi, Elaine. <laughs> and hi, Kimmy, and hi, Maffy. They're here watching with us, uh, watching, watching us at the moment. So, yeah, so how did the kids react? It was um, a journey also. Uh, the first one who knew was my eldest because... Um, uh, she caught my cell phone. She caught my, the message on my cell phone. So when Jessie texted me, I loved you. And then she was like able to, you know, transfer her her sight to that. And she's like, oh, it's you and Kuya Jessie already. So I had to tell her the truth. But uh, my eldest was kind of um, easy uh, to deal with because um, my eldest already knew Jessie in, in theater so mm -hmm. it was easiest for her and then the third one miguel uh it was easier also for him because um you know there are they have different characters and personalities so the first and the third were easier to handle the challenge was the second and the fourth so with the second nico uh he really was very um vocal telling me mom i will never have um meals with Kuya Jesse because of this, because of that. Ah. So he was very vocal about that. But in the end, like after two months or three months of declaring, when he was able to see that Jesse was taking good care of me, so the guards went down. So he mm. was able to have coffee with Jesse. And, but, but the fourth one was actually the most challenging because the fourth one, see Matthew, 
um, he was still hoping that um, me and her, and his dad will be you know back in each other's arms. <laughs> he was mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. dreaming of that. So he was the one who was very rebellious and defiant. Mm -hmm. And uh, from from Jesse's end, uh, he wasn't even forcing himself uh, to be liked by my four kids. I even mm -hmm. told him, you don't have to even prove to yourself that you're a good person. All you have to do is just be mm -hmm. you. And mm -hmm. you don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to push yourself to be liked. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be your end, of your side of the story. Now. Oh, you're the right. Which is I, <laughs> which is I'm very interested to know too, because um, Jesse, like from from what I know from my little research, you ha you grew up with a stepfather as well. Yeah. And you never had that good relationship with your stepfather. So. Yes. How did this now come into play? You stepping in, but I love the word that you used. That I won't be your father in one of the in one of the scene in KMJS. Like you said, I am not your father. You can just treat me like an older brother. Where did the re realization came from? I mean, nobody nobody can technically guide you into that because your history of having a stepfather was not the pleasant one that you wish to have. So where did that realization that, okay, this is how I will present myself and the hat that I will wear the moment I will step into Yvette's life? Maybe through my experiences with my mm -hmm. stepfather. And mm -hmm. yeah, because um, that's what I really told myself before. Um, I If ever I'm going to have kids or if ever I'm, I'm going to have a partner who has kids, Mm -hmm. I would always strive to be better than the person whom I've experienced that kind of relationship with before. Because I know how it feels when uh, a kid doesn't have a good relationship with a person who is mm -hmm. technically not related to that kid, but mm -hmm. who is the partner of his or her mom so of course i would understand that the kids are protective about her mm. and that's something that i really did not um that's something that i really did acknowledge mm -hmm. with the kids you know what mm -hmm. uh, i am here not i'm here not to take away your mom from you guys but i am here mm. to take good care of her and um but i think they just saw or witnessed everything because uh, I'm a type of person that I show my love through actions, mm. and I think they've just seen that. Mm. So it's I don't a verb. Really have to... Yeah, it's the love verb. is a verb. I like that. I learned that today. Love is a verb, and this is really how love is a verb works in a relationship. Yes. So technically, you have the nuclear family. Your kids. I don't know how how they manage to to partner themselves with one and one in three is with you, two and four is with a father. Is that right, Yvette? Yes. Mm -mm. Right. So you're yes, saying my right. partner, father. partner, my tandem, tandem. So mm. so the family is okay now. They have accepted Jesse in. What about the people outside? Like the direct people outside? How did that work in terms of do you really have to explain? Or do you just show up and say this is it and everybody just accepts it? How how was it going out mm. and letting your relationship be known? Uh, the, the second circle that I'm very uh, protective of are the people in school, uh, most mm. especially that little community that I have, the teachers, the guards, mm -mm. the auxiliaries. So it was like around 2017 when I already had a relationship with Jesse, when we started a relationship. But it was also during that time that the annulment was with already taking it in place okay. and then um um so um uh, as i've mentioned in my previous interview that i have to also create a circle of trust and there are a few people in school that i trust and again trust for me is very sacred it's in fact the highest among it's in fact, higher than love for me so um, do not take it because we have different like rankings if it's like love trust 
and there's another one i forgot the another one but trust for me is actually there it's, it's on the, the number one list so um um, with the teachers in school, I created a little circle, and I already mentioned to them that I am with this younger guy. He's sixteen. He's sixteen years older, younger than me. And we have to already tell the people around, the parents, our clients, that my relationship with my ex is is already um, in the process of annulment, so that whoever is going to enroll in the coming school year, August two thousand seventeen everyone's going to know there's transparency there's the truth mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. how i i i dealt my situation in the, in the school with now with my family now uh, beyond my kids uh my family not not everyone was also very accepting mm -hmm. so and i understand that you know we have different minds wow. we have different uh ways of looking at things especially with religion in, in the philippines which is like kind of one-sided so <laughs> they would i hear you, you. <laughs> yeah, they would call you you're a sinner something like oh, that then, were you yeah, yeah they would they would you, um, they, oh my, you would you wow know, it, it's coming from family you know and, and then but then even though they would they they would um uh very be very direct and vocal about it you know though those things are like it, it would never hold you down because as i've mentioned before things like those if it's going to be very destructive to me i would never allow that to eat my soul so mm -hmm. family or mm -hmm. not friend or not if you're if you're there to destroy me automatically my 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 survival mode miss polly is cut off okay so to save me i have to cut off because it, it, they're not doing good for you Okay, so Cut if they're off. not do doing good for you, and if you're just going to be destroyed or allow yourself to be destroyed by their comments, by their presence, then you're actually losing your life. You're losing your life, and you're not taking care mm. of your life, and you're not even respecting the you and you. So, yeah, the, the only way for me to survive is cut off. And I love that cut off. Yeah, Such it, balls it, to do that, yeah, actually, especially in the Philippines. Yeah, you have to cut the cords, you know. Okay. It makes you happier. It makes you glow more. So, so that's but, how we felt the community and and the people, the, the the second layer, the second circle. Right. But it seems like because you mentioned before that you were you you told yourself that nothing can hold me back anymore after this relationship. Like in the in the face that you felt that you were jaded, you used to word you used the word damaged goods. Where did that strength come from? You know, if you look at a damaged good, a damaged good is primarily depleted emotionally, mentally, mm -hmm. physically. That's total depletion. But the courage to still, to even go against the gradient of social, societal norms, people calling you out, even family calling you out, and even branding you as a sinner. Where did you get that strength from to still continue with Jesse? You know, Miss Polly, I realized that as human beings, we're neither good nor bad. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's very fundamental. Yes, can you tell us more about that? We're neither good nor bad. And then um, I could not even tell myself that I am 100% good. I could not even tell myself that I'm 100% bad. Because mm. if I look, if I become reflective of my life, 45 years had passed, I would say that in in little moments in this humble life of mine whenever a crossroad would come into my life and whether mm -hmm. i take the good road or the bad mm -hmm. road mm -hmm. at the end i would always tell myself that between being miserable and learning i would still mm -hmm. choose to learn wow so it's miserable never a versus learning yeah, it's never a guarantee miss polly that at every crossroad you're going to choose the good because mm. as i've mentioned earlier we're neither good nor bad mm. but as long as every time you take that crossroad every time mm. you 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 commit a mistake or you chose the right path at the end of the day it's still going to be you who you have to take care of and if mm. you decide 
to learn from it and to still love yourself in spite of the bad that you did or the, mm. the bad the mistakes that you committed, then I think you become a higher version of yourself after yes. every crossroad that you encounter and choosing to love yourself in spite. Right. Yes. And and that's that's why I call this very courageous. Courage, courage not just by showing up, but courage in terms of being seen as a vulnerable person because <laughs> No one can have courage if they don't, if they cannot see and show to the right people at the right time yes. their vulnerable side. And I think when you mention damaged good canina, just like when you crack an egg and you can see what's mm -hmm. inside, that's a vulnerable side in you that's soft, but your exterior mm -hmm. is hard. But to me, like a damaged good now is a cracked egg, but the vulnerable, beautiful side is there and just finding power to rise again. Exactly. And it's difficult to verb to say this in words because you have to walk the path to understand where you're coming from. You have to be in the same arena to understand where the two of you are coming from. And this is actually this actually resonates with my life because I have four kids. I have three kids, not four, and therefore they have their own mom, and then we co-parent. So when Jesse mentioned about um, I'm just here to be an older brother. I told myself, okay, I'll be here as an older sister. And I told my friends that I'm a guardian and I'm not pressured anymore to use the word I have to be a mom because the word mom just sounds like a competition to the already existing biological mom. And we don't have to compete just for us to nurture these kids, right? So exactly. this really resonated with me, Jess, when you said about, you know, being being a being a young a being an older brother to the kids how did they receive that when you finally lay down your actions and i don't know like what activities do you do with them just for them to understand where you're coming from because you mentioned like love is a verb love is not a noun and you're showing love to them but how does it actually look like in motion to other probably this will also help other um, people looking for a definition or right beat between step step kid, stepfather, whatever you call that type of relationship. How do you ease yourself in? Um, wow, that's a, <laughs> it's a uh, loaded, very, loaded paragraph. <laughs> loaded, but, um, as, um, in fairness, her kids were really, really good. They are really good in general, mm -hmm. and um, it was a, a journey, Miss Polly. It did not take just for a week or two or months. It was really like a, a long journey, and I enjoyed the journey because uh, Yvette was there with me, mm -hmm. and um, that's what I really appreciate with the kids because they really gave me the chance to be with them, and. Mm -hmm. It's like an opportunity that it was not in a setting of trying hard. We were just letting mm. things go with the flow. And uh, it was just like a one-by-one -one setup. Like, for example, with her, with her eldest, like we talk, since her eldest is already around like 20 plus, we talk about practical stuff, about adulthood. Mm -hmm. Especially that she is about to, at that time, she was still a graduating student. So mm -hmm. we talk about stuff about job hunting, like what mm -hmm. to expect, like ah, your okay. first day or, or on, your, on, your, on your first job or the kind of people that you meet after school. So mm -hmm. we talk about practical stuff. And um, with uh, Migi, the, the, third. Third, the third one, uh, who happens to be the second person who knew. Mm. The second mm -hmm. kid who knew about our relationship, uh, it was more of like um, I was more of like an older brother to him. Like I was there to guide him about relationships, about girls, mm. on how to cook, mm. simple food at home, <laughs> okay. and how to budget, and how to budget. How to budget. Because, he, because yes. he was the one who went to Siliman. He really wanted to go to Siliman and study there. So mm. we had to teach him how to budget, and Jesse was there to teach him how to budget. Okay, so is he now in Silliman? A senior high in Siliman. Okay. But he's I, here in, in Cebu. Right. Yeah. 
okay. since the pandemic. Oh, since the pandemic. So, yeah, stuff like on how to take good care of himself. Because, you know, teenagers, mm-hmm. they tend mm-hmm. to be so uh, vain sometimes when it comes to taking mm-hmm. care of themselves mm-hmm. and how they look. So mm-hmm. I was just there sharing to them, you know what, I had the same experience, but you just have to stay cool, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you don't have to cool. rush things. Yeah, I mean, I was just... Uh, uh, that was just the thing that I really showed to them. Like, I was just there to support them, to be an advisor to them in a way. Right. And right. then to, to Nico. the Nico. second uh, kid, uh, Nico, Nico um, he loves movies. So Mm-mm. we talk about movies. We talk about bands sometimes. Mm. And um, he's uh, an artistic kid oh, as well. Yeah, he's like mm. musically inclined. Yeah. So we, uh, the the Their things interests. that yeah I talk about uh, whenever I have conversations with Nico I make sure that it's about his interests so that it would be easier also for me on my side to interact and with him. and I think equally to you're having fun with whatever interest they're in like yes. bands or movies mm-hmm. etc it's also what you like because I realize that you know as growing up as adults. Kids have a tendency to really reparent us all. That's my mm. feel. Like one way or another, they will shot. They will. They will reflect back what we didn't have as kids, and then we realize that oh my god, yes, I never had that. Let me just make that a beautiful experience for this kid now. So, for example, in the realm of say discussions about toys or discussions about interests. You never had the chance to play, for example, basketball with your father, and now you have a boy, and you just want to give that because, oh, I'm a father now. I can now reparent myself and just play. And I think I like how you how you define it just about play because sometimes as parents do, we forget that we can play. Actually, we can play as parents. We don't have to know everything do everything and they will be like the last person that should know everything like a walking encyclopedia to kids it's really okay to play and you see it's really okay to see i don't know i don't know how to how to parent you at this point so i love how how you looked at what they're interested at and how you can compliment and the loving became that Loving became the verb of just really complimenting what they're looking for, what are their likes and dislikes. And this is very important. And that's why I really wanted to expound on this because a lot of parents now are at home and are really stressed out too with this entire pandemic and how to deal with their kids. And sometimes parents also need to be reminded that it's okay. It's okay to not know anything, everything, so to speak. So, um, I have some lines here from, you know, I watch some of your shows, some of your interviews, but I just want to go back to these lines that you said in these shows and just to understand where you're coming from or what's your perspective or reflection now. So I like, I want to go to Yvette and talk about this line from Gugma Talk. You mentioned, this is beautiful when you're talking about you finally launching yourself back to the world, to your school, to everybody in school. And you said, my personal life is just there to fuel beautifully into my profession. Yes. Can Can you expound a little about where you're coming from? Why did you say that? Like, where are you coming from when you said those lines, that line? Miss Paul, we have different roles in our lives. So like me, I have this. It's like a, a theater play. Each one of us, we have in, in this show. We are we play the role as a mom. In this show, we play the role as a sister. In this show, we mm-hmm. we play the role as a teacher. And then, um, in in my in my professional realm, and that is what education. No? Beautiful, whenever happy people create beautiful things, that, that, is, that is a fact. And if you're not happy, how can you create something beautiful? Like a garden. Now, the school is like a garden and you're the gardener. 
And the reason why you have to take good care of the garden, because there are going to be mini gardens after that, and you're talking about the students, okay? So my role as a teacher is, um, is fueled because I am an individual who goes back home, who needs to be loved, after releasing love every day to 200 people, <laughs> students, teachers, and 200 parents, plus, plus more. So every day I get to engage with 500 individuals with whom I have to release energy and love. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I come home and get tired. And then here comes Jesse, who's taking good care of me, cuddling me, loving me, <laughs> telling me that I love you. Would you like to have some coffee? And I get refueled again for the next day. So <laughs> that is, that, I mean, if you look at it, really, you you think that it's a complex. Uh, you 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 think always that probably Jesse has a complex role in refueling your yes, you know indeed. yourself oh. but apparently it's the simplest things like jesse being there just to prepare coffee just asking you how you are giving you a yes. hug even and that's okay to support 200 plus 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 <laughs> so that is one equals 500 plus because they are, they are still the parents you know, mm -hmm. and you have to be available to each and every parent out there as well. Mm -hmm. And you release, and there's Jesse who's like refueling you. So I think the community understands already how complex and important and critical Jesse's role is in my life. Mm -hmm. So they're very accepting yes, already. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Jesse, you're not helping Yvette, you're helping the community. Yes. <laughs> There's like 200 plus plus people, <laughs> students and teachers and the parents and of course the future families that these kids will be building because technically they're our future, right? But for <laughs> thank you, Beth. That's be <laughs> that's beautiful. We it only takes one Jesse to build a community. That's how I'm looking at it right now. 200 plus plus. <laughs> oh, Jesse, ah, uh, ang dami mong. <laughs> Let me <laughs> Medyo heavy, heavy na yung role. <laughs> reset me, reset me. Right. So for Jesse, also in Gugma Talk, you mentioned that it took some time for your mom to process the relationship. Can you tell us, like, can you tell us a bit of where she's coming from? How did the two of you patch eventually? Actually, my... When I introduced Yvette to my mom for the very first time, she was mm -hmm. okay. She was really okay. Um, but when she found out after a few months that Yvette and I were living together, that was Oh, so she, she, she doesn't... Because you're living independently, know. right? Already? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was already living on my in a different apartment at that time. Mm, okay. So, um, she didn't know that we were living together uh, at that time already, so she was surprised. So that's the time that she told me that at first she was just okay because she thought that I was just playing around just like my younger years. With the other girls. With other girls. Okay. So for her, she said it was just like a passing time for me. She didn't expect that I would be serious with it with four kids and you know with all the stories revolving her life so i told her mom i'm serious i know that yeah you might have underestimated me with whatever i am doing or what i have been doing with my life but yeah right now i'm serious and i'm sorry for surprising you but yeah this is the real deal right now <laughs> so like um I just really understood my mom because she grew up in a province in Cebu. And, you know, our uh, relatives in the province sometimes, they have this tendency of being so traditional that um, it is like a, a sin that you fall mm. in love with someone who has been married already. Something like that. Oh. So, it's so, like, the, so the concern, uh, Jess, was more that Yvette was once married and not really about Yvette's age. It's more really on That's just that. one, 
Oh, one of the factors. Ang daming factors ni Mami. Huh? That's age, <laughs> uh-huh. of course. Um, and her, I can even recall one of her questions as, what was I after? With the bed. Am I looking for oh. someone who has money or something like that? That's how she was really blunt to me at that time when she confronted me. And I told her, nah, Mom, you know what? I will never argue. I would not argue with you right now because I totally understand how you feel. And um, I don't want to say things that are that might hurt you. And I'd rather not answer you back. But deep inside my heart and my mind at that time, I was, I felt hurt because that's my mm-hmm. mom. And mm-hmm. uh, it's very understandable for our moms to be so concerned with whatever we do with our lives. And I just told myself nah, that she was just being my mom. And um, I just allowed the time and our distance to heal us. Yes. Right. And you and mentioned that, right? Like you mentioned that too, that space is, space actually helps in healing. Yeah. Like your way, mom too has her own expectations, it seems. And I know you you go we go back to your line before, like less expectations, less arguments, or no arguments at all. And now if you look at it in this dynamics, your mom do have expectations about you and even have expectations at the initial get-go of your relationship, that this will not last. This will just be like a yeah. fling, fling. That was the expectation. And then after that, wala na. It's all for long term. And mom, I'm serious. So, okay. So, how is it? How is your relationship with your mom now? Uh, we're good. Like, we get to see each other, like, twice or thrice a week recently because we play badminton together mm-hmm. with the same group. Of friends so yeah mm-hmm. we're good but it took time that you were not talking with yeah, her like there was yeah. more than a year more than a year and after that it was badminton that brought them back together. <laughs> <laughs> but so well this is happening Yvette what was your thought process around the time that oops am I just staring them up as a family because Jesse Kase is like the unico hijo so yes wait wait is this right D- did you have doubts over being together because of that um, rift with a mom or the space with a mom? Honestly, I, I never had doubts. Mm. I never even, uh, I never even, um, you know, made my, made myself, oh, you go back to your mom because I might be the cause of the yeah. rift. Right. You no, know, I, 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 I'm not that kind of person also. Uh, though it, I, I use it as a joking manner. But it was <laughs> never. <laughs> it's like a joke, but it's never like a point of how should I say this point of uh, an important um, like an argument. No, you go back to your mom and that. No, because I, I consider myself, even though I'm a damaged good, as as I've mentioned in my interview, I still consider myself as like a lottery. You know? mm, okay. <laughs> so I, I consider myself. I'm important. And then um, I don't need to be in competition with the mom because I understood where she's coming from. And then um, in due time, she would really understand. So if she's going to know me more, she would really accept. She would really love me in the end. So um, it was beautiful that uh, late uh, last January 1, we, we had a get together, a lunch get together with, with his cousins. And if she's not comfortable with me, if we're going to be like um, having lunch, like the three of us, I would, uh, I would even tell Jessica, if she's not comfortable, then bring your cousins in, so mm-hmm. that it's going to be like it's going to spark conversations and dialogues, and that's going mm-hmm. to be more comfortable for her to talk to me because mm-hmm. they are like um, Jesse's cousins are there, mm-hmm. something like that. But um. Uh, the the thing that um that I mentioned earlier, Miss Polly, lottery. <laughs> That's just a joke. Okay, <laughs> I actually do no, not don't consider. Go easy. Don't worry. Yeah, I don't consider myself as like. Um, I I don't want to. I I don't want to be a choice. Like okay, mm. cho- uh, choice A, mom. Choice B, me. Mm. No, it, it's mm. not like that. It's more of um. It, it, there's a bigger term for that, and what I mean is is um. 
uh, I don't want to be a choice. I am your life. Mm. Uh, I can expound that later, but sige lang, I'm going to be going after pa your neck for your next question. But. If you look at, sorry, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you if you look at how you dealt with it, Jesse not competing with the mom. Uh, the, sorry, Jesse not competing with the kids. Number yes. one, Jesse was tries trying to complement what is there, not really asking Yvette. Okay, choose now, me or the kids. There was really no that conversation, and then Yvette. You're also coming from that part in your life where you have this understanding that, okay, you had a rift with your mom, but it doesn't have to be a competition. So it seems like if you look at the variables, there is a possible competition if you want to go compete. You can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the two of you chose not to and not to give in to the competition. And Jesse mentioned a while ago about going easy with the entire process and not really having, I think this is where the word expectations really coming from, I feel, that there was no expectation of the outcome. But just really enjoying that moment when you are together and see what will happen after that happy moment together, that beautiful moment together. Which in a way, if you look at the competition, there was the variables for the competition. They just disappeared because the two of you were just enjoying your moment together. So sure. I don't care about what the other people are saying. You can call me. I'm a sinner, what have you. But you're enjoying. And and I suppose the two of you are really enjoying it because it has been four years, guys. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so... Kami din ng husband ko almost four, uh, no, fourth year na. So, neighbors, neighbors, Sante, we will celebrate anniversary together the moment. Oh, of congratulations. <laughs> Cebu. No, it's it's fascinating because four years having this type of, the type of dynamic is not easy. And I just want to tell the two of you that you are very courageous for sharing your story. And it seems like your intention is well built with the highest goodness of your intention of really telling others and educating others about it i did not feel that there's an ego involved in sharing the story even way before like you went in kmjs but it was not really theatrical that hey we're here and you know this is our story so for the other um viewers out there who is in the same relationship we'll probably start with jesse what would what piece of advice can you give anyone out there about being a stepfather or um, having an older woman as a partner? Well, you just don't have to rush things. That's the easiest. I think that's just um, a good thing to do. Don't rush things. Don't force things that you would really like have a goal that within one month I can get the, the trust of the kids already and like that or make your own bucket list like in as fast as like one month you know just trust the process go with the flow trust and the process. Uh, trust the process and because if long, it happens it happens it, yeah if it happens it happens mm. and as long as your intentions are honest and pure I think everything's going to be okay just, mm -hmm. just, just then again, don't expect too much because that's the reason why there's a lot of people uh, are having problems with the relationship because they expect too much. They expect when in too fact, much. yeah, when in fact you just have to um, enjoy the journey and let mm -hmm. things happen because mm -hmm. um, that's what we realized in our relationship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. So far, we're good. We're happy. Right. And um, we respect each other. We trust each mm -hmm. other. As long as we have this open communication, then everything's good. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned about, uh, yeah, you mentioned about expectation, Jess. In, well, you mentioned, while, while you were saying about expectation, majority of the expectations in relationships are not even built by the two of you. These are expectations by the people around you. Around you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Traditional. 
Yeah, you were trying to realize in that relationship, na parang, okay, this is the expectation. We need to make this happen. But when you go back to that expectation, it's not really from the two of you. It's just like, oh, expectation to ni mama, eh. expectation to ni papa, so dapat gawin natin. So that's, thank you for the word expectation. I think that's the word that really grounded me tonight. How about you, um, Yvette, um, for women out there looking for second love because they have to and they can and they will, what words would you like to share for them? <laughs> love should never be... How should I say this? You should, you, do, do not look for love, you know. It, it would just come. <laughs> Uh, the, the first thing that you need to do as a woman is to, uh, to, to, to know and love yourself. Because um, as what Benjamin Franklin said, there are three things that are so, so difficult to destroy. There's the diamond, the steel, and yourself if you know yourself. So as a woman, if you truly, madly, deeply love yourself, the rest of them are just icings. So uh, <laughs> you're the major cake with already the flowerets and the icing and the rest of them are just additional icing. So you take that icing out, you're still the cake. So um, if someone would come your way and would love you, then it's going to be your choice it's if you're going to reci reciprocate that love. But first and foremost, love yourself. That's it. And if you love yourself, you're going to shine your own light to everyone, to, 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 to the community. And then that's going to be the time that you will understand of your purpose, not only as an individual, but as a woman. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I love how you, how Jesse really worded, or really showed to us tonight what expectation is and what it should not be as the basis of a relationship and whatever, probably whatever things that you will go into. And Yvette, about giving yourself a second chance. And it's okay to give yourself, you should give yourself a second chance. Yeah. Yeah. And don't hold back. Give it to yourself. So, exactly. But, to, um, but, but, but wiser and yeah, smarter. Wiser. <laughs> right. Way, way wiser. Okay. Way, way so, do wiser. you guys have anything that you want to um, share to everyone about um, if you have any gigs or upcoming shows, upcoming events? How about your school? You may want to promote. You can do that now if you want to. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, Blessed Trinity Achievers this Academy is um, now um, opening slots for preschool that's four and five year old, the four and four and five year old, uh, elementary, elementary to twelve, and the junior high. Uh, if you're interested, please visit our page, Blessed Trinity Achievers Blessed Academy. Academy. Now, uh, our our curriculum is. 50% traditional and 50% non-traditional. So that's it. Please Polly, thank you. Thank you. How about you, Jesse? Do you have anything to invite our viewers? Um, Plug the school still. Uh, yeah, still the school. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, we're so grateful to be interviewed by you, Miss Polly. Yeah. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And I hope that our viewers and listeners were able to learn from the things that we have shared. And one last thing, if yeah. I may add something, um, to all the uh, people out there who has partners, please never be insecure with your partner because you are not there to compete with him or her. You are there to complement each other. So <laughs> I think that's the essence of relationship. Reminder, no compliment. <laughs> it should be, relationship should be easy. Yes. Let's make it easy, and we can. No competition. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse and Yvette, for sharing your love tonight and showing us what courage means and what vulnerability really is and how you can rise again just by being you. By yeah. being you. Yes. By being Thank you. you so much, Miss Polly. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Thank you. So there you have it. Thank you so much, Jesse and Yvette, for tonight. I'll see you guys again next time.